All right. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Corrine Woods. I am the Director of Programs at Art New York or the Alliance of Resident Theaters New York. I use she, her, her pronouns. And uh, just a quick visual description, I am a 32-year-old woman wearing a, a gray shirt and a gray sweater with uh, shoulder length brown hair that's partially pulled up and I have black glasses and I'm sitting in front of a wall of art. Uh, I run the grant making programs at Art New York, including the Leon Levy COVID Relief Fund, which we're here today to talk about. Uh, I'm going to take you through the fund, um, what it is, how it came to be, what its goals are, and how it is going to be evaluated. And then I will follow that with an in-depth look at the application and leave plenty of time at the end for any questions that anyone might have. Uh, if you have questions during the presentation, you are welcome to put them in the chat or to use the raise hand feature and come off mic if you'd prefer to do it that way. Um, you are welcome to include questions at any time. I'll be kind of pausing throughout the presentation in case any questions come up. Before I dive into the info session, I wanna start this morning as we do with all public events at Art New York with a land acknowledgement. So I would like to take this time to acknowledge that wherever we are currently located on Turtle Island, otherwise known as North America, we are on occupied territory. Art New York's membership in the five boroughs of New York City, including myself where I'm currently in my apartment in Brooklyn, are, uh, operate on the unceded ancestral land of the Lenny Lenape, the Wupinger, the Karnassi, Rockaway, and Matincock communities. I wanna honor and celebrate all of these indigenous communities, their elders past and present, as well as future generations. I also wanna take this time to acknowledge that after there were stolen land, there were stolen people. I wanna honor the generations of displaced and enslaved people that built and continue to build the country that we occupy today. And since we are gathered in virtual space, let's also take a moment to consider the legacies of colonization embedded within the technologies, structures, and ways of thinking that we use every day. We are using equipment and high-speed internet not available in many indigenous communities. Even the technologies that are central to much of the art we make and the grant making that I'm about to go over leave significant carbon footprints, contributing to changing climates that disproportionately affect indigenous peoples worldwide. I invite you to join me in acknowledging all of this as well as our shared responsibility to make good this time and for each of us to consider our roles in reconciliation, decolonization, anti-racism and allyship. Thank you. And I wanna uh, thank Adrian Wong of the Spiderweb Show in Ontario who wrote and has shared that virtual piece of the land acknowledgement. All right. Now we'll move into the info session itself. A little bit of quick background about Art New York. So Art New York or the Alliance of Resident Theaters New York is a service organization serving New York's nonprofit theaters. We serve 420 member theaters with annual budgets ranging from $1,000 to well over 50 million. Our programming and services include grants, short-term cash flow loans, professional development workshops and roundtables, pro bono consulting, and more. And we also have programming initiatives around accessibility and addressing harassment and abuse in the field, as well as some new programming initiatives that we will be uh, announcing later this week and for the rest of the month. We also provide subsidized rehearsal and office space at our facilities in Manhattan and Brooklyn. And we have two theaters in Manhattan's Hell's Kitchen that are available at a subsidized rate for theaters with budgets of under $1 million. Uh, obviously, COVID has also hit those space-based programs, but we are currently open and continue to provide those services to our members and our uh, friends in the field. So this program, so the Relief Fund for New York City Small Theaters was uh, started in fall of 2020 uh, through a really generous grant, uh, seed grant from the New Yorkos Foundation. Now, 
Uh, we are launching the Leon Levy COVID Relief Fund, which is our relief fund for spring of 2021. Uh, it is funded by the Leon Levy Foundation, and we're really grateful to them for their support of small theaters uh, through this relief fund at this time. The relief fund is designed to support New York City based theater companies with annual budgets of less than $250,000. And we especially are interested in supporting those who have had limited access to financial relief, whether because the, the structure of their organization, uh, because their budget sizes were too small to qualify for relief or for other related um, reasons why financial relief has not been available to companies. Um, of this size. We're looking to create an accessible and short application with limited additional documentation required. These are unrestricted grants of $2,500 and they're distributed via electronic transfer or paper check, whichever uh, the grantee would prefer. So last time we ran the relief fund, we had a sliding scale of $2,500 to $5,000 based on feedback from panelists as well as our experience running the grant. This cycle, we are just doing straight unrestricted grants of $2,500 to applicants. So you're not writing to a, a range of grant funding, you're writing for a $2,500 grant. And membership in Art New York is not required uh, in order to apply for this grant. This grant is uh, open to any company that meets the eligibility requirement regardless of Art New York membership. So we have some goals with the program. The first, as I stated earlier, is to provide financial relief to nonprofit theater organizations, including those that are fiscally sponsored, or what we term as nonprofit in spirit, which are theater companies that make theater or do work within the broader umbrella of theater with annual receipts of under $100,000. No one's making commercial profit at that range. We're looking for companies with annual operating budgets of under $250,000 who have been impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic and or any of the results that have stemmed from the pandemic, including uh, the shutdown uh, impacts of management, closed performances, et cetera. We also want to fund a vibrant mix of theaters working with diverse aesthetics and serving a wide range of cultural communities across New York City. Our theater community in New York City and our theater community, even in the bounds of under $250,000 annual receipt companies is a very wide uh, range of theaters working with a different range of styles throughout the five boroughs, different communities, um, expanding the idea of what theater is. And we want to really reflect that diversity and that breadth in the funding of this program. And finally, we wanna support companies who are impacting the field in New York City. And once again, who have had limited access to relief funding and financial support. So there are some eligibility requirements. The first is that in order to apply for this relief grant, you must be a theater company, organization, or artist collective. Uh, you can be 501c3, you can be fiscally sponsored, you can be unincorporated. Um, we don't really care what the structure is as long as it is a theater. This grant is not funding individual artists. If you're looking for an individual artist relief grant, I will point you to our resources page on our website, which does provide some uh, artist relief, some links to various artist relief grants, but this one is really designed to support theater companies or theater organizations. Uh, if you are an artist who leads a theater company, so John Smith is the individual artist, but John Smith's theater is a theater that is artist led but employs other folks, um, that is eligible to apply. And if you have any questions about that distinction or whether or not you are eligible, you should reach out to grants at art-newyork.org and we'll be happy to talk through your individual eligibility situation. Art New York also has an expansive definition of theater as a discipline of live performance. And I would say that definition has only broadened under the COVID-19 pandemic when the definition of live has had to adjust and expand and where the definition of performance has had to um, expand. 
if you call your art theater or you call your organization a theater making organization, then you are eligible to apply for the grant. However, you should keep in mind as you write your application that a panel of theater makers will be evaluating your application for these theater based grants. So you should take the tact of talking about your company as a theater company. Also, this grant is not seed funding, so applicants should have been in operation prior to the beginning of the COVID-19 shutdown in March of 2020. If you are a brand new company that has formed since the uh, start of the shutdown, unfortunately, this relief fund is not uh, this is not the grant for you, um, but you are always welcome to reach out to us and we will be happy to try and point you to some potential opportunities. Also, for eligibility, applicants must have had annual expenses totaling $250,000 or less for either of the last two most recently completed fiscal years. So either 2020 or 2019, your fiscal years, um, your annual expenses must have been under $250,000 for either of those fiscal years in order to be eligible. You also must be based in or primarily produce in the five boroughs of New York City. Uh, if you create work in New York City and then tour nationally and internationally, that's fine. If you are a development company that does your development work in New York City, but you're not a full theater producer, that is also fine. You are eligible under the terms of this grant. Um, but the primary place of working should be in New York City. And finally, you must be financially impacted by the COVID uh, or coronavirus shutdown and the various implications thereof, which is true for pretty much all of the theater companies. Uh, I will also note, if you previously applied for the uh, Art New York Relief Fund for New York City Small Theaters in fall of 2020, regardless of whether or not you got the funding, you are eligible to apply for this grant. Uh, we do not require you to like take a, a cycle off. You are eligible to apply for this grant. So here's our um, timeline for the grant program. So the application opened on Wednesday, March 10th, last week. And uh, for those of us who are here live, it might be longer ago for those watching this recording. The final application deadline is Tuesday, June 1st, 2021 at 5 p.m. Eastern. So Tuesday, June 1st, 2021, 5 p.m. Eastern, last opportunity to submit an application. However, we are considering applications. Uh, we are sending them to the panel on a rolling basis. And so if you get your application in earlier, uh, your application may be sent to the panel earlier. You may receive a decision on whether you've received funding or not earlier. Uh, applications that are not funded during a particular panel may be considered during future panels. So if you submit your application by the end of March and I send it to the panel at the beginning of April, if your application is not funded by that panel, it will return to the pool and may be considered again by the panel um, for future, uh, future panels based on how much funding we have to give away by the end of this uh, grant period. There is not a benefit to getting your application in earlier or later, except that it like, gets it off your plate. Um, and it helps me to spread out those panels so that there uh, isn't a like, big clump of applications that we're all considering at once. Um, but there is no benefit to you to get it in early or late from a funding perspective. All funded um, applicants will be notified as they are funded, as the panel um, approves them. And so that will go out on a rolling basis. Uh, all applicants will be notified of whether or not their application was funded by June 30th, 2021. So you may hear earlier if you are considered by an earlier panel um, and you were funded, but all applicants will know by the end of the year of our fiscal year, which is June 30th, 2021. Grants will be dispersed on a rolling bi-weekly basis and will be dispersed either by electronic transfer or by paper check, depending on what the grantee would prefer. So we put that into your hands. I'm gonna pause for a moment and ask if there are any questions about the grant, the goals, the eligibility, or the timeline. I'm gonna give it a minute of silence. All right, I will continue. 
So as with all Art New York grants, uh, this grant is adjudicated via a panel process. So the panel of theater makers uh, working primarily with companies of this size will be evaluating the applications based on these three evaluation criteria. The first is demonstrated need and impact of the grant. This is always a challenging one, especially in a moment of relief because so many companies have such great need. Um, the panel will be considering whether the grant can impact the companies and how the companies have said that the grant will be impactful to them. They will also be considering the need that the companies have shared. And I wanna say, because I've given, I did a whole round of this in the fall and I gave a little bit of feedback. Um, there are a lot of cases where some companies are just going to be in a better financial place than others, and that is going to determine who's going to get the grant. And that is just kind of the state of where our field is at at the moment. And so we do really encourage you to share your need and share the impact that a grant is going to have with you, and we'll go over in the application how you're going to be doing that. But please do not uh, exaggerate or flat out lie on any of this. Please be as honest as you can when you're sharing this need and impact so that we can do a full evaluation. The second evaluation criteria is the impact on and service to the community. So these are New York City based grants, but each of your theaters is working within your own community as well, whether that's a community of artists or a community of audience members. And that may be a community that is uh, narrowly defined amongst geographic lines, or it may be serving a specific cultural or ethnic uh, racial community. It may be serving a community of disabled artists. Uh, there are many definitions of the word community. You're going to tell us who you are serving in your application, and you're gonna tell us the impact that you are having on them. Finally, organizational identity. So organizational identity here is worth 20%, but you're gonna share with us your mission statement, your vision and your values and your goals. And you're gonna tell us how Corona, uh, the coronavirus and COVID-19 have impacted those and how you've made uh, choices based on your organizational identity and in line with those mission values and goals. And uh, the panel is going to be considering that as well as they look towards these evaluation criteria. So uh, we accept community nominations for panelists. So we're accepting nominations for grant panelists through March 30th, 2021. Um, the panels are all held virtually and they're held every two weeks to a month, uh, depending on how many applications we get in, um, in a given period of time. Serving on a grant panel does not impact a theater's eligibility to apply. And if you or someone you know would make a good grant panelist, you should absolutely nominate them on our website. And you can find that link in the main Leon Levy fund, uh, COVID Relief Fund page of our website. So highly recommend that you nominate grant panelists. It really helps us to make sure that we are reaching a broad community, uh, broad base in our community in order to put together really robust and diverse panels. All right, we are moving into the how to apply. So the first thing to be aware of is about how to log in. So there are three options for you if you are applying for this grant. If you are an Art New York member, you are going to log in by clicking the login as an Art New York member button and it's going to take you to our normal membership login page, which is uh, member clicks. It's the same page that you use to register for either this info session or for other Art New York events or to access our resources. You're going to use your individual Art New York login that you use to access that type of event registration and other resources. And once you've input that information, it will take you back to the grant portal and you will be logged in through your Art New York membership. So if you are an Art New York member, you are going to click login as Art New York member and use your Art New York membership login. If you are not an Art New York member, but you have previously applied for an Art New York grant through this uh, system, so within the past three years, then you are going to use the same user ID, which is your email address and password that you set up the last time you applied for a grant. 
and then you're going to log in using the uh, login as non-member button. So it's the same user ID and password that you used for your previous grants and click login as non-member. You can also reset your password. It will send it to you and you should be able to access it that way if you've forgotten your password, provided you have access to the email account. For applicants who are not Art New York members and who have not previously applied for an Art New York grant, so brand new, never seen this before, then and only then will you create a new uh, login using the column on the right. So when you go to log in, you're going to see a column on the left. That's the login piece. It's going to ask you for your username, password, and it has our two buttons, login as Art New York member and login as non-member. On the right is a column to create an application. If you have never seen that page before, if you've never applied, then you are going to go ahead and make your login using the column on the right. Following that, you'll be able to log in using the username and password that you've set up with that new login and clicking the login as non-member button. If you have any problems, challenges logging in, um, something isn't right, you should reach out to grants at art-newyork.org and someone will be back to you within 24 hours, well, within one business day. Uh, in order to assist you and get you logged into the system. Sometimes there are glitches, it, it's fine, we will take care of it. All right, I'm going to switch what I am sharing with you. So one moment, please. All right, once you have logged in, you are going to be taken to a page that looks like this. Uh, so there are a couple of different ways to navigate through this system. The first is if you've already started an application, you can click incomplete and it will take you to your incomplete application so that you can continue to edit it. If you need to begin an application and it hasn't taken you directly to the Leon Levy COVID relief fund, you can hover over begin an application and this relief fund is the first option there. Uh, also, if you go to home and uh, log in, you're going to be able to see your completed applications as well, as well as any other potential um, applications that you may have outstanding, like something that has expired. Uh, if you'd like to see a completed application that you have done, you can click print and it will show you the fully filled out application. So after you've completed your relief fund application, if you'd like to print a copy for your records, you would go to completed, find the correct application, click print and it will populate a PDF for you. All right, but what we are looking at today is how to do the relief fund application. So I'm gonna click edit on my incomplete application and it is going to take me to this page. So there are three, uh, two ways to move through the page and through this application. There's a menu bar at the top that shows you that we have three sections that you will be completing, eligibility confirmation, applicant information, and short answer. You can also move through using the buttons at the bottom of the page. There's a save, a save as next, and when you're not on the first page of the application, there is also a previous button. A couple of things as you are to keep in mind as you're working through this application. When you're entering numbers, so if we ask you for financial information, uh, primarily that's what you're going to be entering numbers for, um, use whole numbers only. Don't include any commas or decimal points or dollar signs. So just the number and only whole numbers. I don't care about anything less than a dollar. Uh, we are not doing uh, like word counts or character count limits because um, I do not want you spending time like counting spaces and ampersanding all of your ands. That's not a good use of any of our time. Um, so we have included some suggestions for word counts on some of our short answer questions, but they are suggestions. You can write as much or as little as you need in order to answer the question and meet the evaluation criteria. And we have seen really successful applications from people who have written 
just a little bit and we've seen successful applications from people who've gone into more depth, it really depends on your situation and how you write and communicate in application formats like this. So the first thing you're going to do in this application is you're going to confirm that you are eligible. So this is exactly what I read off to you earlier about your eligibility for the grant. You are going to confirm that you meet the above eligibility requirements. Once again, if you have any questions about whether you meet them, you should email us at the grants at art-newyork.org email address, and we will be happy to discuss your individual situation. Also, you are going to tell me whether or not you're currently a member of Art New York. The panel is not going to see this. This just helps us on the back end of making sure uh, that we are keeping track of members and non-members. So you can select either, yes, my theater is a member, no, we're not a member, we've been a member in the past, but we're not currently, or I'm not sure. And once again, the panel will not be seeing that that is not a part of the judging criteria. It is purely for Art New York's administrative um, purposes. So once you have made those selections, you're going to click Save and Next, and that will move you on to the next page. You can move through these pages without completing all the required information, but you will not be able to finalize your application until you have completed all the final, uh, all the required information. So applicant information, uh, if you applied for the relief fund in the fall, you're going to see we've combined um, some of the information from what was previously the financial information page on that application into this one. So it's set up a little differently, but the information asked is still largely the same with a couple of cuts. So you're going to give me your theater company name. That should be the name that you refer to yourself in all of your other material. So when you're doing your short answer and you're talking about your theater company, it's the name that you refer to yourself in that space. So you do not need to give me your like long DBA name. So for example, if you are Awesome Theater Festival DBA, so doing business as Awesome Theater because you no longer run a festival and so you've submitted an applicate, uh, a DBA to the state to be able to do business under a different name. I only need the name that you are referring to yourself throughout the application. That's usually also the name by which the rest of the theater community knows you. So theater company name. You're gonna give us your theater mission statement and we suggest a hundred words or less. You're gonna have the opportunity to go into more depth about your theater's mission in the short answer section. This is primarily utilized for um, our purposes when we're sharing back with the foundation the missions of the theater that we are funding, as well as for the panel to have a really quick reminder as they are paneling on panel day, uh, what theater company we're talking about here. So a short hundred words or less. You're going to share with us your website if you have one. The end date of your most recently completed fiscal year. For most of you, this will be either December 31st, 2020 or June 30th, 2020, although some folks have different fiscal years and that is totally fine. Your fiscal year is your fiscal year for your organization. You're gonna provide us with your operating expenses for fiscal year 20. Uh, this should be a whole number, no dollar signs, no commas. So operating expenses for fiscal year 20. Also operating expenses for fiscal year 19. And once again, one of those should definitely be under $250,000 so you can meet the eligibility criteria for this grant. You're gonna tell us what boroughs of New York City your theater works in and you can select all that apply. And then you're gonna share brief bios of your theater leadership. You can either do that by uh, sharing a link to your web page. If you have a page on your website that already has your bios, no need to copy and paste them for me. Just give me the link and the panel will um, see them. So that would be where you'd include the link. Or you can paste them into a text box uh, if you have them in like a document or they're not publicly available on your website. And these are brief bios. So I don't need like three paragraph biographies. Think like slightly more than you'd put in a playbill, but not as much as you'd put on like an executive leader single bio on a website where it's like a full two pages, something in between. Then you're going to give us contact information. We need a primary contact and a secondary contact. Those need to be different email addresses and preferably different phone numbers, although I'm less stringent on that. 
but they need to be different email addresses because if you give me the same email address, 50% of the time folks have typoed the email address and it's no good. And then I have to go searching for an opportunity to get in touch with folks or they give me like an info at email address that no one is checking or someone who is supposed to be checking it isn't checking it that day, but I need to get in touch with them within the next 48 hours. Give me two different people so that I have multiple options to be able to contact you if I have uh, clarifications needed about the application or to notify you that you received the grant. Um, both of those things are very important. So I need two different contact information. They cannot be the same email. Please don't give me the same email. And then we get into the short answer section. So I'm going to go back to my PowerPoint for this. So much switching, excellent. All right, so we have slightly adjusted the short answer questions for this round of the relief fund, um, but hopefully to the benefit of you all. So you have three required questions and then the fourth question is optional. Your first required question is describe your company's mission, vision and your organizational goals. What is your contribution to New York City and or to the theatrical field? In answering the question, you may wish to consider what makes your theater company distinct from other theaters in the city. It might be a method of working, it might be an aesthetic style, it might be the community that you serve, but why are you a theater company doing what you're doing? Um, this is your opportunity to tell us a little bit about who you are and what you are doing. The second question, who does your organization serve? If you serve a specific and explicitly defined ethnic, cultural, or geographic community, or any other specific and explicitly defined community, you should absolutely include that here. So if you primarily serve folks within the Flatbush, Brooklyn neighborhood, you should include that. Uh, when we talk about who your organization serves, that may mean on an artistic level, so it might include artists, it might be audiences, it might be a combination of the two. Um, but it is not necessarily uh, the strongest answer here to just say we serve everyone. No theater is serving literally everyone in New York City. So who are you making work with and who are you making work for? The third required question, describe the impacts that COVID-19 has had on your organization and how this grant might help your organization to in, address that impact. How have you and or how will you have to change the way you operate in response to the pandemic? Please share not only the quantitative impact of the pandemic, but also the qualitative. So share with me not only numbers, but also stories. How has the pandemic affected your ability to fulfill your mission, vision, and goals? You'll notice that this time we did not ask you to give us a figure for the financial impact of COVID in the, um, on the previous page. We're asking you to do that here, and it's part of your storytelling. So if you lost a specific number uh, through loss of box office income or a canceled performance, you should absolutely include that information here. Um, if the impact of COVID is a little less quantifiable because uh, everything was um, projected, then that's fine. What are the stories of how COVID has impacted you? Um, we have seen all kinds of ranges of these type of need and impact statements from sharing these quantitative, you know, we lost these three contracts and that was an impact to our budget of $60,000 to really um, stories about loss in communities, stories about loss of leadership, uh, stories about artists who've had to uh, take other work or move away and are unable whether this community is going to maintain their artists moving forward. Those are all valid stories to include as part of this. But think about as you're sharing that need, how a grant of $2,500 from this relief fund is going to make an impact on your organization to be able to 
move forward um, and to be able to continue in making theater and doing work here in New York City, both during the pandemic and afterwards. If you've taken this moment to pause, that's also totally valid. Um, you should include that information here. Include your thinking behind it, how it how you've made decisions in line with your mission and your vision and how a grant can help um, impact your organization in making those mission-based decisions in response to this pandemic. I also wanna say, this is not a direct commitment of how you would utilize the funding. It's a general operating flexible support grant. You're gonna tell us what you feel like the impact is going to be and you're not going to lie to us about it. You're going to be honest about what you see that impact as might being. But, if you say that you're going to use this to do a, an outdoor performance in June and then there's a huge wave and we are no longer allowed to do outdoor performances in June for some reason, we're not going to penalize you for A, not foreseeing the future and B, not utilizing the grant in exactly the way that you said you would because this is a time of great uncertainty and constant change. So give us your best guess about how this grant would impact you and how you would plan to utilize it but also know that I'm not going to be coming after you if you receive the funds to be like, well, okay, cool. How did you use it? Okay, you didn't use it exactly in line with this. That's not okay. It's fine. It's flexible general operating support. The other thing as to not seeing the future, um, things are changing on a daily basis at this point. Um, as I record this, we are maybe going to be able to open indoor venues in a few weeks at a very limited capacity. That's going to be the right choice for some theaters. It's not going to be the right choice for others. Start, companies are starting to make timelines, but there is still a great number of unknowns. Things can constantly change. We're not going to penalize you for not knowing the future. Um, the panel is instructed to take your application from the moment that you wrote it, as opposed to putting onto it any information that we may have gained or how the world may have changed since the application was put in. Since things are changing so fast, we are trying to give you uh, the best benefit of the doubt that you are working on the best information that you had in any given time. And once again, it's a flexible grant. It can change if it needs to. If the panel has specific questions, we will be returning to the applicants uh, if they have questions that they would like answered and may affect whether or not you were funded. So we know that this is very broad. We are trying to create mechanisms in this grant making that allow for a two-way conversation when necessary. If there is something that you as an applicant did not include that the panel would really like to see or would like further information about. Uh, the last time we did this, we took questions back to about 10 of the 150 applicants. So it's still a very small number, but we do have that mechanism in place. Finally, uh, this is your optional question. Is there anything you would like to share with the panel about your theater, your work, or the community that you serve? I understand that this is a really broad field. This is a really flexible grant. Everyone is operating under different circumstances at the moment. We've tried to capture what we can with these three short answer questions, but recognize that that might not capture all of the information that you uh, need to share with the panel, or you may need to share some information that is uh, specific to your theater uh, in order to provide a little bit of background knowledge. You can do that here in question four. It is optional. Your application is not going to be stronger for including it or weaker for including it. Um, but it is your space to be able to put in something that maybe doesn't fit within the bounds of these three specific questions. Uh, and then you are going to finalize your application and submit it. The grant is largely designed to be hopefully able to be completed in less than a couple of hours. And uh, so hopefully that is the case for you. Once again, there are no word counts. You should write as much as you need in order to answer the question, but don't give me pages and pages and pages. It's meant to be a short application. Share the information that you need to share and then don't worry about uh, writing and writing and writing uh, a, a huge amount of text. There are no supplemental materials, that's it. Four short answer questions, that application information, you're gonna confirm you're eligible. Just so you all know, we are not offering application reviews for this grant or formal feedback after the notifications are sent. However, you are always welcome to talk to me if you have a specific question. Um, I 
will be putting up on the uh, webpage a link to uh, schedule an appointment with me if you would like to talk to me about this or any grant related things, but we're not doing like a formal narrative and budget review process and we're not uh, reviewing applications in advance of the submissions deadline or in advance of submission. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, panelists are going to be able to submit questions on applications if they need further clarification, and we will pass those questions on to the applicants. And applications not funded during particular panel meetings may be considered in future panel meetings. So this is our contact information. So First of all, you're going to contact grants at art-newyork.org. We have a team monitoring the inbox. Someone will get back to you within one business day usually. Um, it may take a couple of business days for days where um, our staff is on retreat or in learning, which we are doing um, kind of on and off for the next few months. But there'll be an out-of-office reminder if that is the case. Um, but please give us at least a full business day before writing back. Um, we are working as hard as we can to make sure that everyone's question is answered um, in as timely a fashion as possible. If and only if you have a question or need to talk to me directly, you can email me at cwoods at art-newyork.org, but you should always copy the grants email address unless it is a confidential question that you need to have a private conversation with me about. Um, that please thank you. It really helps me with my inbox and with making sure that everyone gets uh, the answers that they need and uh, that we get them out to you as quickly as possible. And a note here that our office hours are Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. We don't check email generally on the weekend. So, and we won't be checking on Memorial Day, which is May 31st. So if you wait until the last day to apply for this grant, which is June 1st, uh, which is the Tuesday after a three day weekend. Any questions you may have, you wanna get in it by the Friday before because we won't be checking emails over the three day weekend and we don't want you to end up kind of stuck. So make sure that you've at least logged into the application, you know you have access to it prior to that three day weekend and know that we don't, don't generally respond to emails on the weekend. All right. And now we move into questions. I'm going to stop the recording and then open up for any questions that might come up or might have come up. 